Well, first of all, thank you so much for this opportunity to present to you. The project I'm going to show you today is the Centre of Higher Education Excellence, which was designed in collaboration with Brand Architects. This is a fieldwork and brand architects project. It's located on the lands of the Wurundjeri and Bunurong people, and I want to pay my respects to their elders past, present, and emerging. So when we started the project, we actually thought it was a pretty terrible location for a school. It's uh, next to Chapel Street. There's Melbourne High here, but it's a really busy road, and it's sort of surrounded by skyscrapers, so a really sort of tough place. The design solution we came up with, because it's a really narrow, deep site with just two frontages, one to Melbourne High on the right and one to Chapel Street on the left, was really to have this central atrium space, and that really unlocked the project. And it's always super exciting when one of your first sketches gets built. <laughs> um, so we worked very closely, uh, the brand team and I and the fieldwork team, with uh, Dr. Ben Cleveland, who's a pedagogical um, a design specialist who actually lectures here at Melbourne Uni. Um, and we really went back to first principles with this. It was, what can we do to design a building that really uh, enables uh, sort of great learning environments? And it's about getting back to basics. It's about natural light, you know, views to living things, natural ventilation. So this central atrium space really helps to achieve all of that. So this is a state school, which is uh, for the highest achieving students in all of Victoria to be able to do courses which are transitioned to uni. So it's really a stepping stone between year 11 and 12 and uni. Um, so we really wanted to make this a sort of a bit more of a sort of adult environment, but a bit more of a sort of tertiary environment. So on the ground floor, you've got an entry off uh, Chapel Street, the central uh, atrium space, a large 270 seat auditorium space, and then out the back, a landscape area, which is a mediation between uh, the Ches site and the, the Melbourne High site. Typical floor, so there's two learning neighbourhoods on either side of the central atrium space, and we've got the staircase next to the atrium. And then on the top floor, we worked with our friends at Open Work to do a sort of landscaped uh, rooftop terrace. So this idea of always having views out to sort of living things was uh, one of the reasons that we incorporated these large plant boxes on Chapel Street. So the exterior is actually quite tough. We wanted a simple, robust building, a series of vertical fins for shading, and then these really large plant boxes, which actually, even since we took these photos, are really starting to cascade down. It's got a corrugated uh, concrete facade, and then some fun little sort of details. But we wanted it to be a really, consciously, a really simple facade. Because when you step inside, there's much warmer sort of interior. It's this um, you know, four and a half story high central atrium space. It's all clad in sustainably harvested Victorian ash. Um, and that space has got at the bottom a uh, sort of lush fern garden, and that's really developing really beautifully. The idea with that was to, again, have a bit of a connection back to the country there, is to say, well, you know, if this was a piece of geology, what would actually grow there? So these are indigenous species of uh, fern and, and ground cover. So it becomes a space for the students to kind of hang out, but it's also, I suppose, really the heart of the school. And the feedback we've gotten, because students have already been there for a few months, from the principal is that the students arrive a bit apprehensive. You know, they've walked along Chapel Street, and they step into the space, and their shoulders kind of relax, and they really feel kind of energized by the space. And the other key thing for us was that rather than doing a building just as a series of sort of sandwich layers, we use this atrium so you can feel the kind of energy of all the different spaces. So the staircase, for example, that leads you up through the building, we actually hid the lift away so the students wouldn't use that. Um, we really wanted the staircase to be the main form of circulation. This is a view from the uh, auditorium space. And the auditorium is really set up actually like a university type auditorium, except that it's got curtains all the way around, so you can actually really open up to the outdoor spaces as well. So that, again, the idea of sort of connection to nature being really important. And then going up the staircase, we wanted the building to be really honest in its expression of materials. You know, we wanted to not go down the sort of route of sort of patronizing you know, primary colors and things like that. We wanted this to feel a space which was much more about less applied finishes, more natural sort of materials. So uh, on the upper levels, you get glimpses across between the learning neighborhoods, um, and then, of course, views down into the, the bottom of the atrium. And the bottom of the atrium is also set up like a cafeteria canteen space, because it's also open for community groups to be able to come in and use the canteen, the cafe space, and the uh, auditorium. So the idea is that ground plane is much more public and then at the top, we've actually got a ETFE inflatable roof. And what's awesome about that is it's much lighter structurally. And the two layers can inflate and deflate 
um, because they've got dots printed on both sides, so you really can mediate the amount of sunlight that gets into the space. It works thermally beautifully. We've also got operable louvers around the perimeter of it that allow for ventilation actually up through the space as well. So those are the series of fins, again, clad in the Victorian ash. The structure of the building, we were really keen to try and decarbonize this project as much as possible and also use as much natural and local material as possible. So what we've actually got is a hybrid timber and concrete structure. So by incorporating these LVL beams, we've been able to drastically reduce the amount of concrete we used in the building. So it's large beams and columns in concrete and much thinner slabs because we've got these LVLs that span across between. This idea of the building also being quite honest and almost a pedagogical tool, you know, where you can look at it and say, I, I get how this building's put together, I get how the air comes in, I get how the power's moved around, was this, uh, and also, you know, acoustic paneling. So it's all very open and sort of exposed and, uh, you know, things like even the galvanized bracket, brackets who are keen to just sort of keep those in their raw state. And then the learning spaces, I mean, really quite basic spaces, but the focus again is on really great amenities. So beautiful, you know, ventilation, views out to living things, um, great natural light, and again, those simple sort of material surfaces. It's also pretty sophisticated sort of a, um, a place from the point of view of the amenities students have. So really great laboratory facilities, really great digital and tech environments as well. This is also set up if we're fortunate enough to be shortlisted, I'm really excited to show you, because of course in eight minutes I can't tell you everything about the building, but we also worked closely with Ben Cleveland, uh, Dr. Ben Cleveland, on the sort of behaviors of the teenagers in this stage of their life, and through that we designed a whole series of nooks. So it's full of little nooks and, cre uh, and crevices and little spaces that students can be, little one-seat areas, two-seat, three, four, four five-seat areas, and the students are really loving it, so all these sort of group uh, areas. And you can see again that sort of emphasis on natural materials, and it's just been really wonderful seeing the students. One minute? Okay, thanks. I'll rush through some little bursts of sort of color and then the rooftop. You can see we've got, we worked with open work on a series again, extending the idea of sort of nooks and crannies for students to hang out in different group sizes. And then the back facade facing Melbourne High. I think one of the great wins of the project was that we were able to put a little mini parklet over the top of what was a total chaos of different drainage easements and sewage easements and things like that. So it was a really, uh, testament to the project team that we were able to get this lovely little landscaped interface which we designed with our friends at uh, OpenWork. Um, and that creates a lovely sort of transition between the Melvin High um, and the new facility. And look, if we're fortunate enough to be shortlisted, absolutely delighted to show you through the project. Uh, and the principal's really keen, he's so proud of it as well, and, and the rest of the brand team, so thank you.